We all know the saying, short hair, don't care. But you will care if your hair is silver or it's gray and the fun days of coloring are long gone. What's up guys, it's your girl Sharon. And if you have short hair like mine, sometimes this hair can get very boring. So in this video guys, I'm gonna share with you some fun and creative ways of how you can make your pixie pop. And after watching this video, you will be able to implement some creative ways to enhance your pixie when and or if you ever get bored. And hopefully these ideas will also prevent you from wanting to color your hair. And if you're still coloring your hair, that's amazing. You can still have fun with the color, but these creative ways of how to make your pixie pop will help you as well. So guys, let's get into this video. So the first way you wanna make your pixie pop is start with a great haircut. Many of you out there are always looking for someone to cut your hair because I've actually gotten some of you in my chair in Chicago. But starting with a great cut is so important. That is the total look of a pixie. A great cut consists of three things. The first one is very, very low maintenance. So for me, I don't curl any hair. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have to curl your hair, but for me, shower ready hair is the best thing to give me the low maintenance that I need. I can brush my hair down and it's easy. I don't have to do any curling. I can basically let it air dry if I want to. So starting with a great cut and having that low maintenance is so key to having a pixie. The second thing, um, about having a pixie and starting with a great cut to make your pixie pop is that you want the style to look feminine. A lot of times you guys um, have to go to barbers and barbers sometimes, I'm not knocking barbers, but sometimes barbers don't understand the difference between the femininity and the look for women who want that feminine look as opposed to if they were doing the same cut and on a, on a guy. Now, not a, necessarily a pixie, but using the clippers, having to tape the hair, having to fade the hair. Cause some women want buzz cuts. And you know, some men wear buzz cuts, but you don't want a buzz cut where the barber is just lining you across the front. That's not feminine. Now, don't get me wrong. If that's your look, then that's your look. But make sure that you choose a person that can give you that particular look. And the third thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to go to a reputable stylist. You don't want to just go to just any random person that you pick. The most important thing is for you to find someone that can cut your hair that has been recommended to you. They're professional. They don't have you in the salon all day long. And they really understand what you need and what you want. Because a professional hairstylist is going to understand your head shape. A pixie is not just all about the look. It's all about how it is tailored to your needs and tailored to your look. So your body shape, your face shape, your head shape, because y'all, we got all different kind of heads. You know, that little occipital bone, that's about right here. Some of our occipital bones protrude. Some of our occipital bones are very, very flat. So a great hairstylist is gonna either minimize a bulging occipital bone with a pixie and or build up on a flat occipital bone with a pixie and it's all in the cut. So that's why it's so important to start with a great cut. So normally I cut my hair myself. I've been cutting my hair myself for years. Um, I start with the shears and then after I cut it down to a certain length because normally if my hair grows, I want it to be shorter as it can. So if it grows to like four inches, that's usually too long for me. So I normally like my hair about, about one and a half to two inches, about kind of like it is right now. I don't like a lot of length to my hair because then it gets to the point where it starts sticking up. And when I turn to the side, I don't like to see all that length in the back. So it's very, very important that you get the cut that you want so that you feel sexy because a pixie is sexy to me. To me, a woman wearing a pixie is so freaking sexy because you, you're exposing all of your face, you're exposing your nose, your eyebrows, your lips, your ears, everything is exposed. You know, you can't hide away like some people do with long hair, right? You know, they don't always wear it up in a ponytail where they're exposing their face. It's hanging down and they can hide a lot of stuff. Maybe not on purpose, but they can hide a lot of stuff. But you out there wearing a pixie, we cannot hide anything. So that's why this video is so important. These creative ways that I'm gonna be sharing with you today and how you can make your pixie pop. 
So yes, start with a great cut. And as I cut my hair, I am very, very careful because using the clippers is, it takes skill, okay? I mean, some people, I've heard some people being able to cut their hair on their own at home, but you have to use different guards. And I use all kinds of equipment to cut my hair. I use clippers, I use the razor, I use um, notching shears when necessary, when I can do it on my own. Sometimes I can't do that by myself. But I work on creating the best look for me, the shortest look for me without any gaps. And now I'm not gonna lie, I have messed up sometimes, right? But I know how to fix it. Most times I know how to fix it, but I'm very careful and I'm always looking in a mirror so that I can see the back of my head, so I can see the side of my hair. So starting with a great cut is so important. And I know that a lot of people in different areas, different states, different cities, can't always find that person to give them that look. But if you can just search around in your neighborhood, you see someone on the street wearing a short cut, ask them who cut their hair. And to be honest, if you're wearing a relaxer and your hair is straight, even if it's a Caucasian woman and her hair is very, very sharp and a pixie cut, ask her who cut their hair. Then someone can give you that look with the shears and the clippers. And it won't look exactly like that woman, but it will be laying, you know, it'll be blended very well. And that's the most important thing in a pixie cut is that the hair is blended. You don't have any hard lines. If you're wearing it tapered and or faded, the hair is just laying smoothly so that when you shampoo it at home, you should be able to walk out without the hair being curled. And that's all based on the haircut. So in order to make your pixie pop, make sure that you start with the haircut. The second way that you want to make your pixie pop is maintenance. And you want to start with a great shampoo system. And you guys already probably know, I'm going to highly recommend the Maison 276 line of products. They have an amazing hair care system that I love to use on my hair. And it's not the only product I use on my hair. I also use Design Essentials, their moisturizing shampoo, their moisturizing conditioners, and also some of their leave-in conditioners as well. But you wanna start with a great shampoo, something that you can use so that you can prevent feeling dry, looking dry, because that's very important when you're talking about wearing a pixie and your hair is gray or silver. Now, if you're still coloring your hair, I'm sure that the Maison 276 line can also be used on your pixie if you're coloring your hair. Because, I mean, clearly it, it helps to prevent all the things that are attracted to gray hair as far as, you know, the outside, the water, you know, the products that are used in our hair if they're not clear or very pigmented so that you're not developing any yellowing to the hair. But also, if your hair is still colored, Maison 276 is an option for you, as well as the Design Essentials product. So what I normally do is follow the Maison 276 conditioner and whatever my hair needs. And if you want a better description of how to use those products, you can check out this video right here. So stick with the products that you're already using if they're working for you. When drying my hair, I always use some type of leave-in conditioner. And going back to the Maison 276 line, you can use a small amount of conditioner, rub it in your hands, not the same amount if you were conditioning the hair, but just a small amount to rub it in your hands and just kind of rub it through your hair and leave it in. So that can be add a great addition to use as a leave-in conditioner. However, if you are um, like me, a lot of times I like sprays as a leave-in conditioner. And this one right here is an excellent product. It's a 10 leave-in conditioner. I love that product and it can be found in my Amazon storefront. In one of those categories on my storefront, I'll leave the category below so that you can click on the link and go right to that particular category and list and find the leave-in conditioner. So drying my hair consists of um, not a whole bunch, right? My process for molding my hair, I use the Design Essentials, the foam. This foam is freaking amazing for a pixie, right? I mean, when I tell you, you can use this on wet hair and you can also use this on dry hair. And I'm just gonna tell you the process that I do when I'm actually molding my hair. I, after I put the leave-in conditioner in, but, but let me let me take a step back. Before I put the leave-in conditioner in, I make sure that my hair is thoroughly towel blotted dry. I don't like to mold my hair with a lot of wetness in my hair because to me, you can't get it as smooth because you have this slick hair, you put more slickness on it with the foam. So just make sure that 
you are towel blotting it and getting most of the moisture out of your hair um, after you put the leave-in conditioner on or before, whichever one you choose. If you want to towel blot it really, really good and then put the leave-in conditioner on it and comb it through, that's fine. Okay, so then the second step is to use the foam. Now this foam is amazing because sometimes like during the day after you've shampooed and styled your pixie, sometimes you have, say for instance, you do for a cut or a trim around your hairline. What you wanna do at night, and that's why I love this product because you can use this on dry hair. So if your hair is sticking up in the back and you kind of want it just to leave it in and just um, put, apply it, I'm sorry, before you tie your hair down at night, then you can use the Design Essentials Foam and it gives such an amazing set on the hair. When I tell you, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's going to it's gonna make the hair firm. It's not going to make it hard, but it is going to make it firm where you're going to have to take a comb and just kind of loosen it up a bit. But I love the tightness that it gives to my hair when I um, mold it. Now, when I mold my hair, I pretty much let my hair air dry. If I'm due for a texturizer and I have a lot of texture in it, then I'm gonna tie it up after applying the Design Essentials Foam. Most of the times I wear a scarf. Sometimes I just don't wanna wear anything on my hair. And what I notice is that when I tie it up, it's, I mean, it is slicked down in the morning, but sometimes I don't want that look. Sometimes I don't want the real slick look because again, I'm not putting any curls in it, right? So like right now, there are no curls in my hair. And sometimes I just want it to be textured looking. So not just slick down. And what I'll do in that case is after I get out of the shower at night, I'll put the leave-in conditioner on and I'll just kind of brush my hair down. And I won't put any foam unless it's around the sides and the back because that air, those areas I want to be really, really smooth. But if you want that really, really slick look, just take it all the foam all over apply it and then just tie your hair up. Now, I don't sit under the dryer either. I let my, I mean, when I say low maintenance with my pixie, I mean freaking low maintenance. I don't use a dryer, period, because I just let my hair air dry and it's dry, it's fine. I put a little product on afterwards. And so that is my process to make my pixie pop when I'm shampooing, when I'm drying. So the last stage in your maintenance is styling. Now again, when I say I like low maintenance, I mean I like low maintenance. I don't wanna do a lot of styling to my hair, so I'm just gonna give it a little spin. You can see my hair. So when styling, I can tell you, these are my three favorite products when I style my hair. So this particular product is called Tancho. I found out about it from a little girl let me not say that, a young girl that I worked on some um, TV sets with a couple years ago. So it's called Tancho. Now these products will be in the category in my Amazon influencer storefront, and I'll put the category below on the screen. Now this little product is kind of like a wax, so you can see it. And I'm just, I'm just gonna use this one. I'm gonna put a little bit in my hand, and usually, if I use it, maybe it's about, about that much for my hair. And I'm gonna kinda just cocktail them all together so you guys can see. Now this next one is by AG Hair. It's a, a structuring pomade also. So remember, I don't curl my hair. Now these products can be used as products that you use on your hair prior to curling. But you gotta keep in mind, they're waxy consistencies. So you don't want a lot in your hair. So that was the second product. And the third one is this Design Essentials Botanical Oil. And I think I mentioned, and I think I mentioned three, but there's one more. It is the Maison 276 Botanical Oil. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of all of them and just cocktail them together because they won't hurt. So if you notice, I still don't have a lot of product on my hands, it's running. So what I do is just take it emulsify it in your hand and just put it all over my hair. Now, if I want to, I can just kind of wear it styled up if it's long enough at the time. And just rub it on my hair. And then what I do is just kind of take a this bristle brush and just brush the hair. Now, if you notice, my hair in the back, I don't have a lining. I don't like 
And this is what I call when I talk about the femininity aspect of a pizza cut. The back, I don't like the lining on the sides, and I don't like the lining across the bottom either. Because the less lining you have, the less touch up you need. So I just take a brush, and there's different ways I can style it. Like normally I wear my hair over to the left, or sometimes I do this little, I call it my little, <laughs> my little Superman look where I like to do it like that sometimes. And this is old hair right here, y'all. I haven't, um, it's probably about seven days old. I need to shampoo. So that is it. And sometimes if I wanna get a little bit more product, of sometimes of the wax product, then I just get a little bit more and that's it. And then sometimes if I want, I can just wear it really exposed in my face. Just kind of like a little side part and just kind of wearing it off my face. I think I'll leave it like that. So that is how you can make your pixie pop with maintenance. And one thing I want to say and the last thing I want to say with making your pixie pop with maintenance was very, very important is if you're curling your hair, especially if you're wearing gray hair or your hair is like white, white and silver, you want to make sure that the stylist is using mostly flat irons because if they're using that stove heat where they push the, the curling irons in the stove, your hair can get burnt. It can get what's well, called singed and it can make areas of your hair turn yellow and it's really hard to get that hair to turn back without cutting it off only because it's a burn and burn hair needs to be cut off so make sure that your hairstylist is only using the electrical little small flat irons to style and funk up your pixie so those are my creative ways and how you can make your pixie pop with maintenance and one last maintenance tip. Sometimes what I do is take a little um, spritz and I put the spritz either in a brush or I'll put it on a rat tail comb. And I'll just comb the hair down. Like say for instance, the hair is a little older and you kind of want to refresh it and make it look smoother. Then I put the spritz in a brush or in a rat tail comb. And what I might do, like this is if I'm getting dressed and going out and I really wanted to hold a little bit more after applying the wax, then I just take it across the front so that my front can continue to just kind of lay down. I don't usually wear my bangs too long. And then on the sides, so just a little light spritz and just, you just a little, you know, just mildly spritzing it on your hair. And you can also follow up with a gloss. So any type of gloss, I love Design Essentials gloss as well. So that's another tip that you can use to make your pixie pop with maintenance. So the third way that you can make your pixie pop is with makeup. Now I know I might get a lot of comments with, about this. I know it because it's funny how so many people in the comment section, I read so many comments. I respond to everybody's comment. I don't care who it is. I had this guy on there one day. Um, it wasn't a video. I think it was in my, on my, one of my shorts. And I was looking all cute and, you know, showing my hair and stuff like that. And in the comment section, he put, uh, wow, a granny. <laughs> and it was funny. And I commented back and I said, this is why I inspire and empower and uplift women to go gray. Just because of comments coming from, you know, I don't want to call them an idiot, but idiots like him. But anyway, so with makeup, you can make your pixie pop. And I say that because so many women shy away from makeup. And a lot of times I hear women say that, you know, they don't need to wear makeup. They want their natural beauty to show up. And I get it. I get all of that. But why not just have fun? Like if you've never worn makeup and you're over 50 and this time of your life is supposed to be fun. And you wanna try things out that you've never tried before. So the best thing for me, in my opinion, is to just have a little fun with makeup. So in these next few little videos, I'm gonna show you how I have fun with makeup. 
And one thing I want to say first is that it's, it doesn't have to be a lot. Like you can just not even have like, okay, my face is pretty fully made up today, right? I didn't use any foundation, but I did use powder. If your eyes is your focal point, like when I say focal point, it's something that you want to dress up. You want to dress your eyes up. You want to dress your cheeks up. You want to dress your lips up or maybe just some mascara and liner and lip gloss, but just have fun with makeup. Just sheen added products, sheen added lipsticks where there's not a lot of color. Like I don't have on a lot of color right now, you know, and it's just, it's actually this little cheap pencil that I use and that just enhanced it a little bit more. But this is it. This is an NYX brand and probably costs about $2. And you can just use this and not have on any powder. You know, you could use a tenant moisturizer just to give your skin a little pop. That's all it is. In order to make your pixie pop with makeup, you need to make your face pop, right? So just add a little bit. A little bit goes a long way, especially if you're walking around with them chap lips now. You need to use some chapstick or just some little Vaseline. You can carry a little bit of the, the little tube Vaseline and just add a little gloss, a little on your cheeks, maybe make up your brows, whatever you wanna dress up on your face, do that and just have fun. So you already have short hair. I just say start with your brows when it comes to your face and makeup. So I have this video right here where I actually show you how to dress up your brows three different ways. So the first one is basic and that's for you all out there who say you don't like to wear makeup, but you just wanna give your brows a little pop. You wanna make sure they're, if they're thin and they need to be filled in, just use, give them a basic look. So, and then the next brow is the beauty brow. If you wanna put a little bit more makeup on and just make that face pop a little bit more with your pixie, then use the beauty brow. And then your bold brow, if you're going hanging out at night, you're going out to dinner with some girlfriends, with your husband, your significant partner, just use a bold brow. Give that bold look so that your pixie can really pop because you give attention to those eyes and those lashes, which I don't have really long lashes, but I do have a little bit of mascara on today. So you already have short hair, so create bold looks with your makeup to make your pixie pop. Try new colors in your lipsticks, your blushes and shadows. I've seen so many of you comment again that you love your natural beauty and I get that. But why just survive instead of thriving? Have a little fun in life. Make your skin come alive. Experiment with color on your skin. It's sure to make your pixie pop. And you can still rock your natural beauty when you use makeup to make your pixie pop. Just add a little color, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm not pushing you to put on a big bold red lipstick, but that sure would look good. Or a big pink bold lipstick, but you would sure be rocking that pink. Just add color lightly and just a little bit at a time. And back to the lashes. Like I know my lashes are short and I really want to perfect adding lashes. When your face is totally exposed, lashes look incredible. So not those big lashes, but just enough that will enhance your natural lashes so that it can make your face pop even more. And even if you just use mascara, that would look amazing as well. So these are some ways that you can make your pixie pop with makeup. So guys, what are some ways that you make your pixie pop? If you've been watching any of my content for any length of time, even since the beginning of this channel, you guys know that I love accessories. So my favorite way, of course, to make my pixie pop is with all types of accessories. So let's start with the neck accessories. There's so many ways that you can make your pixie pop. Because let's think about it. If anyone is looking at you, like say for instance, you're sitting down looking real cute at an event, nobody can see you from the waist down. They can only see you from the top up. And I always say, and my idea is, if you're sitting down all night, because some of you guys wear those heels that hurt your feet, and you only buy them because they're cute. But say for instance, all night long, nobody can see those shoes. But if you step out with your pixie, and you look amazing, say from the waist up, and really they're only looking at you from the neck up. So first of all, you got this rocking haircut, and then you got this makeup on, 
The next thing is to add some awesome accessories. So let's just start with neck accessories. And you wanna keep in mind what size your neck is. I used to be, well, let me not say used to be, I still do, but I don't. Most of the accessories that I make now are for me. So I started an accessory line back in 2015. It was called My Bo Chic Boutique. And I made all kind of leather, just all kind of beautiful accessories. And what I noticed is that when I would make certain accessories and I would be out, you know, at some of the events selling my work, um, their necks come in all sizes, right? So you want to focus on your neck size. You know, if it's really thick, some people have, you know, shorter necks. So you gotta make sure, and maybe I'll do a video on this, what type of accessories you need to have. Let me know down in the comment section below if you would love to see a video. Cause we're gonna be getting into style and fashion videos in 2023. Because I polled you and you guys said that's what you wanna see. So if you have a really, really thick neck and you're kind of really broad up here, then, make, then tone down your accessories a little bit. Make them a little thinner, make them a little skinnier. They don't have to be big and bold, but you can layer. You can layer so it gives that big and bold look without having really, really wide designs. So for example, like this piece right here, I know I got it hooked in with my scarf. <laughs> so this piece right here, this is um, one of the pieces that I made. So I could just add this right on top of my shirt. You know, even if I didn't have the scarf on, it would still be popping, right? And again, everything is from your neck up. You know, some of us got the girls, y'all. We got the girls. So make sure that if you turn to the side and you have something on like this, that it's not making it stick out like this, sitting on top of the girls. You don't want that. So you might wanna have something on that's thinner, that's more layered, and maybe it stops before it gets to the girls, right? <laughs> so it doesn't have to protrude out like that. You just want something that kind of sits a little flatter based on your size. Now here's another piece and how you can make your pixie pop with neck accessories. This piece right here, I love, love, love. I didn't make this, I made the last one that you just saw, but look at that. I mean, say for instance, I'm sitting down at an event and I don't have this scarf on, like this is a statement piece. It's gonna make a statement, right? It's definitely gonna make a statement. Choose your accessories to help make your pixie pop based on your size, your shape. If you have really, really broad shoulders and you don't want something coming all the way out, you wanna make sure you're narrowing that area. If you have a really wide neck or some people have really short necks, so you don't want anything on like I previously had on, you just maybe make a few little chains with some charms or some type of costume jewelry. So it doesn't have to be like just a one single chain. It can have some beads on it, but make sure that it's not completely coming around where you can't even see your neck. I love high chokers, I love big bold pieces, but that's just me. So just make sure you are mindful of that when you're making your pixie pop with neck accessories. So just make sure that you find yourself some statement pieces and some statement earrings. Now let's talk a little bit about the earring. My earrings, baby, <laughs> I don't really wear earrings. All I wear is like these little posts, but I saw this Caucasian girl online and she had these big puff earrings on. And I'm like, oh, I can wear that. I think I could wear that. So what I did is Google puffball earrings. And first of all, I was on Etsy and I was like, hmm, those are cute, but they're, I don't like them that much. But I went and made myself a pair and they were just okay. But then I found this young lady online and she had these, she makes them in all different sizes. And me, you know, being the bold, person that I love to do when it comes to fashion and style, I decided to order the biggest one, right? I got these things and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I am not going to be able to wear those earrings. They are too big and my holes have stretched, but these are really, really light. But I said, next time I'm going to order a size smaller. So I just love the, I need to cut that off. And what she told me was that I could cut around it and make them a little smaller. But I didn't want to do that because I want to order some more from her. And I'm like, oh my God, I just love these earrings. You know, I don't wear them all the time. I don't wear them that much, but I just love these earrings. I think they are so hot. Now, I would actually wear this necklace with these earrings. 
because when it comes to my girl, you guys know who this is. I read her book and I love her book. She says the more, the better. So like if I had this scarf on and then I have like a little belt tied around my waist, imagine someone looking at me sitting down with my little legs crossed, just giving that energy and just looking amazing, right? That would be fire. So the next thing, in addition to the neck accessories and the earrings are your scarves. There's so many different ways to wear scarves. And I have on just one little, one little way you can wear scarves, but there's so many different ways, so many different scarves. You can co cover your whole head up, but I always like that look where my little hair is peeking out underneath so that you can see my white hair. I'm not trying to hide my whole head. Any type of scarf you can use to put around your head and just make that look pop. So it can be a shorter scarf, a medium scarf, or even a long scarf. And if you wanna just kind of tie it to where you don't have anything hanging down, then you can just wear a cute little scarf just like this. Take the glasses off and you just got a cute little look. So you wanna make sure that you just pull out all the stops with your accessories, starting you know, with the neckwear, your earrings, your scarves, and my really, really fun look with my gray hair and my pixie is my hats. You guys know I love a good newsboy hat. I love my little toboggans and I always like to just peek a little bit of hair out. What I've come to love are my hoodies because I used, before I went gray, I never wore a hoodie. So this is what I'm saying when it's time to step out the box, step out your comfort zone, right? At 50 plus. And, or even at any age, whenever you're ready to step out your comfort zone, just step out. I just love a hat. Like, I love the way it looks. I, it gives me more style options. I can't put my hair in a ponytail. So if I have like a quote unquote bad hair day or lazy hair day, I don't feel like molding and doing this and doing that. I'll just throw a hat on. You know, it might be a little toboggan where my hair is sticking out in the front or I'll have a new newsboy hat on. That's been my favorite for ooh, over 20 years. So yeah, I love, love, love my hats. And you can also incorporate different headbands. But here's a really fun look that I love um, when talking about barrettes. Um, I see this look on the runway a lot. And so it's adding multiple and multiple, just basic bobby pins. I think this is a really, really cool look. So now on to the very last making your pixie pop with accessories. Glasses, glasses, glasses. And if you want to see a really cool video, watch this video right here. I did a couple, what was it, in 2021 on gray hair and glasses. But I just buy glasses for fun. I don't all, I do wear prescription glasses. I just wear my glasses when I'm driving. So most of the glasses you see me wear are mainly just for fun. A friend of mine purchased these for me and I think they're really cool. They're green, they don't have any lenses, but sometimes I just wear them anyway. And then my little shades that I love, love, love. I think these are really cool. Now sometimes I'll wear these inside because I just love that different little tint that they have on them. And a lot of my glasses I get from either online, I'm creating a eyeglass um, list on my influencer store. So I have a lot of funky glasses on there, my influencer Amazon storefront. So, and these are really cute. I love these gold glasses. I bought these from a thrift store in St. Louis. So yeah, just make your pixie pop with glasses. I hope that this video was so fun for you in learning how to make your pixie pop. First of all, starting with the cut, make sure you get that amazing cut. Then secondly, start with your maintenance system. Your maintenance system starts at the shampoo bowl, you know, to put that moisture in your hair. And then you want to make your pixie pop with your face, makeup, concentrating on your brows, whatever your focal point is, whatever you love, your lips, your cheeks, your eyes. And just be bold. Like I have some people, I have some women in my group that they rock some funky glasses. I just love women who have the big cat eye. I'm not a big fan of cat eye, but I love cat eye on other people. So just be bold, go to the thrift stores, go to, you know, online. They have so many places online you can buy some funky glasses. And just go online, buy your glasses, rock your glasses, and let your glasses make your pixie pop. And lastly, you wanna make your pixie pop with accessories. So let's be bold, let's have fun, let's be more powerful. So if you want more ideas that can spark your creativity to make 
your pixie pop be sure to watch this video next where i show some awesome looks on johnny's short locks they are also some creative ways that you can implement to make your pixie pop make sure you download our top tips and how you can look good with gray hair and also receive a free video training on how you can get dressed for any occasion fast. So until the next time guys, take care, peace.